You're looking live at Chapter 3 Show, What you can do. I'm Mr. Goldman. Welcome to the test. Section 1, rewrite the following expressions as addition expressions. Then simplify. Uh, I'm going to rewrite here, negative 6. Instead of subtracting negative 2, I'm just going to add 2. That's 6 negatives and 2 positives, which is negative 4. <coughs> Negative 9 minus 9. Keep the same first number the same. Negative 9, instead of subtracting a positive, I'm going to add a negative. 9 negatives plus 9 more negatives is 18 negatives. 5 minus 3. <laughs> a lot of people put 5 plus 3. 5 minus 3 is not the same as 5 plus 3. It's the same as 5 plus negative 3. 5 positives, 3 negatives equals 2. Uh, this one was a little sneaky for some of you. Uh, negative 6, keep the first number the same. Instead of subtracting negative 3, I'm going to add 3. And then this is still subtraction, so you couldn't have just put minus 5. You have to add negative 5. All right, so a lot of people missed that. Uh, 6 negatives and 5 negatives is 11 negatives. And 3 positives cancels out 3 of the negatives. We're going to have negative 8. Negative 8. So you needed all of these rewritten just like that, and you needed all the answers to get a 4. Section 2, you guys did very well on this. 4 minus 83. Remember, order is very important in subtraction. This is going to be negative 79. All right. 62 plus 208 is, this is just an old school third grade. I don't think anybody missed this. Well, maybe, maybe somebody missed this. 270. All right. 73 minus 45. Uh, that's just like old school. Again, sort of old school subtraction. All right. You can go 6 and 13. That's 5. 13 minus 5 is 8. 6 minus 4 is 2. And it's going to be positive because I'm starting with the higher number. So positive 28. And then 1 minus 12. Again, order matters. This is not the same as 12 minus 1. 1 minus 12 is negative 11. Yeah, it's All right, there we go. On to page 2. Section 3, simplify. Show how to write each of the following as a numerical expression. All right? Numerical expression. Then find the value of the expression. 7 added to 5 groups of 11 minus 3. Well, I'm going to start with 5 groups of 11 minus 3, right? Groups mean parentheses, and then I'm going to add 7. You could have flipped the order on this because it's addition. You could have written 7 plus 5 groups of 11 minus 3. Now I'm going to simplify. This is, uh, I do the subtraction first because it's in the parentheses. 5 groups of 8 plus 7 uh, 5 groups of 8 is 40, plus 7 is 47. A lot of people, careful, because a lot of people, when you did, if you did it the other way, this is correct, but remember, if you circle terms, it's going to be like that, right? A lot of people did 7 plus 5 first and then got mi mixed up. Okay. 5 groups of 4 reduced by reduced by two groups of six. So I'm going to start with five groups of four, and then I'm going to reduce it by two groups of six. Remember, order does matter in subtraction. That got a, little, a few people. Five groups of four. I'm going to do the multiplication first on both of these. Five groups of four is 20. Two groups of six is 12. And 20 minus 12 is eight. Now I'm just going to multiply or divide. Four times negative three. Four groups of three negatives is negative 12, right? Four times three is 12. Positive times a negative is a negative. Negative two times negative four, removing two groups of negative four. Or two times four is eight. Negative times negative is positive, so positive eight. This one was a little tricky. Negative four times negative three, uh, that's going to be positive 12. And then positive 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. An odd number of negative numbers is going to give us a negative answer for multiplying. 
18 divided by negative 2. I have a positive divided by a negative, so my answer is going to be negative. 18 divided by 2 is 9. Negative 24 divided by negative 3. It's a negative divided by a negative, so my answer is going to be positive. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Negative 45 divided by 9. Negative divided by a positive is going to be negative. 45 divided by 9 is 5. All right, there you go. This, this section was funny. Either people got them all right or all wrong because they got the, the, the words mixed up. Uh, remember, associative property is what? Grouping. And then the commutative property is what? Order. All right. Uh, I am going to cheat. Uh, you should have written it out, but I, since I wrote, wrote them out up here, I'm just going to write AP or CP. For step one to step two, notice my group here is 3 plus 19. My group in step two is 2 plus 3. That's a different group. I've changed the grouping, so that is the associative property. And then I added. From step three to step four, I go 5, 19, 2, 4. 5, 19, 4, 2. The order has changed. So that is the commutative property. It tells me I can change the order. From step four to step five, my group is four plus two. In step four, my group in step five is 19 plus four. That's a different group. That is the associative property. Step seven, I go 5, 23, 2, 5, 2, 23. I change the order. That's the commutative property. And then this last part, you could have written addition uh, or just 30. Um, I was a little lenient at the, it, it, with uh, accepting sort of interesting answers here. But we can talk about that at the conferencing. All right, last section, divide. This is one and one third, not just one third. All right, I'll show both ways to do this problem. The first thing you're gonna do in both is convert this to an improper fraction, which is four thirds. So four thirds divided by one sixth. We'll do the common denominator method first. My common denominator is gonna be six. So I multiply four thirds uh, by two over two. My giant one is two over two. I get eight sixths divided by one sixth. Now that I have a common denominator, I can just forget about it and divide the numerators. 8 divided by 1, which is just 8. If I do uh, multiply by the reciprocal, if I start with 4 thirds divided by 1 sixth, that's the same as 4 thirds times 6 over 1. I can cross simplify here. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 6 twice. I get 8 over 1, or 8. You could have also just multiplied across and got 4 times 6 is 24. 3 times 1 is 3. 24 divided by 3 is also 8. So the answer here is 8. All right, a lot of ways we could have done this one. Uh, the way I want to set this up is 6.6 uh, 6 over 0.24. I'm going to multiply by 100 over 100. And that's going to give me 660 divided by 24. <laughs> All right. At this point, you can just simplify the fraction if you would like to. Um, or we can uh, do long division. So you'll have this problem set up. 660 divided by 24. I'm going to put this decimal place here already because uh, I have a feeling it's not going to go in evenly. And then I'm going to bring it up here also so I don't lose it when I do the long division. 24 goes into 6, six zero times, so I'm not going to put anything. 24 goes into 66 twice, so I'm going to put the 2 over the second 6. 2 times 24 is 48. My remainder is 18. Bring down the 0. I want to see how many times 24 goes into 180, and that happens to be 7. 7 times 24 is 168, with a remainder of 12. I bring down this 0. 
and 24 goes into 120 five times. Five times 24 is 120, a remainder of zero. So my answer, so 6.6 .6 divided by 0.24 equals 27.5. Thank you for watching. Please, if you're in my class, use the Google form to sign up for a retest.